this demonstration, uh, the first, I've done two demonstrations already, Charlie and I, this weekend, and we used my horse, Diesel, and another young horse, which had its first two rides in this arena this weekend. So that was all quite exciting. But now I've got a new horse coming in, and this demonstration is going to be slightly different, hopefully getting to the same points. But I have a horse, Tommy, who um, is very spooky. Now, I have not ridden, seen, I don't know what's going to happen today. I don't know how spooky this horse is. I'm just going to hop on and manage it as best I can and hopefully show you guys how to maybe deal with things or give you some tips and tools that you might be able to use for your horse if it's spooky. Now, you will have to bear with us. We haven't done this before with a spooky horse ever, so we don't quite know how it's going to go. But just bear in mind, we're trying to teach you a few things, and we're trying to get the horse to a better place so that the owner can carry on in a, in a dressage career and uh, keep on going. And just to make sure it's not just Jason under pressure, uh, <laughs> I will also be talking to the owner who's going to come down and join us, um, and we're going to talk through some of the things that, that we see uh, in front of us. Uh, but before we do, just a quick introduction myself as well. My name's Charlie Unwin. I'm a performance psychology coach. All that effectively means is that I work with riders to help them take control of their mental states, uh, particularly uh, in two contexts. Firstly, in the context of competition and preparation for competition, working from novice level all the way up to Olympic level um, and work with various uh, Olympic riders. And, uh, and secondly, and perhaps more importantly for this afternoon's demonstration, through the context of horsemanship, in helping riders uh, develop the confidence they need as leaders of horses. And we're going to talk a little bit about what leadership means to, uh, to you. Um, before, before Jason brings, uh, brings our, our horse in today, um, it might just be worth uh, letting you know a little bit about our background and, and how we met. And I met Jason not so long ago up in Doncaster when I was working with the uh, UK Polo Cross uh, team, who we might have some representatives up there as well. Uh, and Jason was kind of really interested in the work that I was doing with the team and with the riders. And he was starting to draw parallels in the stuff that I was doing with riders and the stuff that he did with horses back home in Kent. Uh, and anyway, we kind of met up and we got talking. The more we spoke, the more excited we got. And we'd often sort of stay up late, like school kids at night, discussing uh, these parallels. And in essence, what we came up with was that behaviors, whether it's on a human level or a horse level, cannot really be understood unless we understand the environment around that horse or the environment around that human. And also, as humans, we're driven largely by our emotions. We are, whether we like it or not, emotive beings. If we're frustrated, we will behave very differently to if we're happy or excited. Also, emotions are very contagious. And it's exactly the same with horses. However, there's a couple of key differences, and I'm sure we're going to see them at play today. The first one is that horses are largely driven by fear. It is their overriding emotion that informs a lot of their behavior. And I know the horse we've got here today uh, is very, very spooky, and we'll be able to see that. But secondly, horses are 10 times more sensitive to picking up on other people's emotions or other horses' emotions. They have to be from where they come from in the wild as well. So leadership as a human becomes extra important, and we will be exploring that. So I'm going to let Jason um, bring in, bring in our, our third member of the team, and he can introduce him. Righty-o, on we go. <coughs> now, there's probably a few people that have seen, seen the other demos, but for those of you that haven't, um, everything you do with horses should have a progressive manner. So you start off with something simple and you build on it. Now, I haven't met Tommy before, so I'm just going to get to know Tommy a little bit and get to see what he's all about, really. And I can do this simply by walking along. So as I walk along, the first thing I'm going to do is see if he's paying attention to me. I'm going to walk this way. What do we think about that? Was he paying attention to me? Yeah, sort of. 
me, I'd want him to be a little bit quicker. I saw him, and this is key for all you guys to be looking for the small details. When I turned down there, he went like this. And I'm going, oh, a bit of a bump. These little things, a little bump out of the way, all these things. I need to start to get Tommy thinking a little bit more about me. Because if he's not thinking about me, then he's thinking about all you guys and the signs and all these other things that make horses spooky. I turn this way, so I'm just going to sharpen Tommy up a bit. When I stop, Tommy should stop. Okay, okay, but not quite good enough. I want him to stop right there, just a little bit back from me. I stop, not quite close, Tommy. And all I'm going to do is just change directions a few times. I walk along, I stop. That's getting a little bit closer. That's not too bad. Well done, Tommy. And it's something as simple as that that can get you back on track, simply changing directions. So if you're leading along and your horse moves off on you, okay, just change direction and walk back the other way. And give them a little pull. If they walk to the end of the rope, just say, you've just bumped in to the end of the rope. Okay, and eventually when I stop, they're going to start to think, which way is he going? And they're going to be waiting for me. It's a really a key thing to do. So for those of you that have horses that are walking over you a little bit, this is a great exercise to get them thinking about you. Um, hey, Jason, I get just to pick up on that. It sounds like you're already embedding your leadership behavior yeah. on him, yeah. you as a human on the horse. So I'm wondering what, what are the key things, what are the key qualities that you're thinking about in terms of your behavior that are getting him to see you as a leader? Very good point, Charlie. Um, the key things that all you guys should be looking for, and me included, is to stay calm. If my horse was to start rearing up here or doing anything like that, you still want to stay calm, okay? And remember the message you're trying to get through to your horse. Never lose sight of that. A lot of people, when they become a little bit, oh my goodness, this has happened, you lose sight. You lose sight of your goals and what you're trying to achieve. And therefore, you can't be consistent or decisive. And they are also key things. And this is something to, when I say decisive, here's a very good example of that. When I walk down here and change direction, which, which would you prefer to be following? Which person would you prefer to be following? Or this person, as a leader, to go to battle or go somewhere where things are not so good? Okay, I have purpose. The second person has purpose. And the horse will pick up on that. I'm decisive. I will look after you. There are three very important words and something that people need to think about as well. Yeah, and I guess that something I've noticed from you, Jason, is that you don't tend to treat your horses like pets too much as well, because I know that can really undermine that, that sense of leadership. So I guess if it's not about love, there's something there about being a strong leader that allows him to do that, not doing it because he wants to out of love necessarily. No, that's, that is a good point, Charlie, actually. And it, it goes back, it's an old, it's an old thing. Um, horses, if, you, if you're treating your horses a little bit too softly and allowing them to do the right thing, oh, it's all right, mate, I know it's scary over there, but I'll just give you a little pat. You've got to understand what your horse might be thinking. My, if I'm, I'm going to go inside Tommy's mind and just imagine he's had a spook over there, he's jumped away from that, and me, being protective of my little Tommy, right here. I've said, well, don't worry, mate, it's all right. By doing that and treating him like a, a pet or someone that I really love and being compassionate like that, at that point in time, is actually reinforcing the wrong thing. I've said, Tommy's jumped away. He's gone, crikey, I don't like that. And now I'm giving him a pat. I've said, good boy, you've jumped away from that. You've survived. That's, that's the way. So I've just taught Tommy that it's probably he's going to get to a happier place if he does do that, if he acts like that, if he displays that behavior. So it's important not to go down that road. Be a leader. Say, Tommy, you've jumped away from that. You need to come back over here and be there. That's better, Tommy. And if you're a strong leader and you're able to show them where to go, 
Horses are beautiful animals. They will follow you everywhere. That's what makes them so great. That's okay. why they are the noble horse. So, uh, so whilst Jason prepares for his, uh, for his next bit uh, with, his, with his bag, I'll maybe just throw this back at you as riders as well. So what are the opportunities for you to lead? Because often we notice ourselves not leading when it's too late. For example, when you're out on a hack and your horse just plants his feet down and, and scared of a, a flower on the side of the road or a, or a bollard or something like that. And by that point, we tend not to be the best leaders and that's when we really need to be. So I think a lot with riders about where are the opportunities to demonstrate clear, um, consistent or calm, consistent and decisiveness in everyday life, just when you're around the horse naturally because that will ingrain the behaviors that allow us to do it naturally when we really, really need to and when we get that kind of emotional response to the horse just suddenly spooking like that. 